is Kashmir safe for tourists? That's what we're gonna cover in this video. I'm gonna be drawing off experiences that I've had spending over a month there and doing some traveling around. So if you're curious about visiting the state or excuse me, the territory, or if you're curious about visiting India in general, this will give you a sense of one of the most prime places to consider visiting. Now it's not for everyone, but I would recommend you at least watch through this video to see if it's for you. So a little bit about me before I dive in, I've been traveling India for more than four years. I've spent a lot of that time in the South, but I've also been to 12 states now and a handful of territories, including Kashmir and also other Northern territories. But while I was there, I spent time in Srinagar. I stayed or took some trips on Dal Lake and also stayed on Nigene Lake, which I'll talk about briefly. And I went into the mountains and saw a village called Sonamarg. So I have a general sense for my own experiences there. So you can factor them into whether this would be a good trip for you. The quick answer on is Kashmir safe for tourists in 2023 is that I had a safe trip in 2022 there were more tourists than, than had ever been in Kashmir before, and there weren't any major incidences. And in 2023, there haven't been any major in, in incidences, and tourism is still increasing. So given that, I could say that it's pretty safe assumption that it's safe to go. If you're gonna be, be safe and practice basic common sense with traveling, I'm gonna give you some tips from my experience and research that can help you out. But overall, yes, it's safe in 2023. If you're liking this video, please click the like button, help the video go out to more people. Now I had put off going to Kashmir for years because I just wasn't sure about the situation. If you go to the US State Department website, you're gonna see a level two travel advisory. Advise caution when you're there for terrorism and something else. But basically, and I'm not gonna go fully into the history of why it's a dangerous place, but it's been in, at the middle of some Indian and Pakistan disputes up until as recently as a few years ago. I didn't even know you could go there um, until I was like, oh, let's, let's actually go and see if I can do this. And you just book a trip and you go and you don't have to do anything extra that you would for any other place. And it's, and it's a place that I had been wanting to go since I first came to India. I had watched a movie that I thought was really cool and it, they went to Srinagar in like the 1950s and they took a boat on Dal Lake and looked at the snow-capped peaks and I was just, that was an image in my mind of what beautiful India is. And it's one of the reasons why you talk to any Indian people and they're gonna wanna go there. And if you talk to people around the world, they've heard of Kashmir. Now I'll quickly talk about my experiences in Kashmir to give you a sense better what it's like because it is unique and there are some situations that you're not gonna find anywhere else. For instance, it's one of the most militarized places in the world. I'll, I'll kind of go into that more, but you'll see people with machine guns all over the place. So let's start at the beginning though. So I flew from Delhi to Srinagar. It's a short trip. It's an inexpensive trip. And Srinagar is the international airport there. And it's not that big, but you basically get off the plane and you can walk right out the door without, you know, having to fill out any extra forms or anything like that because there's so there's no ubers and there's fewer taxis so the price is more like when you get out of the delhi airport the baseline taxi price is 500 rupees for a prepaid taxi to go a very short distance uh Srinagar is a little bit longer but the baseline price is 800 rupees for a private taxi so you know i'm cheap so i was looking around for like is there a bus that goes in i'm walking through the parking lot uh, looking for a cheaper option and some guy comes up to me and he says he's with the tourist police I had not heard of that before and he's asking me all this personal information what's my number uh, or excuse me what's my name uh, what's the address of my hotel what's the name of it and he's 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 feeling kind of like a weirdo scammer to me and I'm thinking like the tourist police what is that I asked him if he could show me his uh, 
his what card identification card and he did show it to me and but i was kind of testing him too i'm like oh i bet you could make some you could make that off of uh the internet he's laughing he was a generally decent decent enough guy just a little bit creepy um in that he was asking me a lot of personal information and i did come to find out that there is a tourist police in in srinagar and the point is to be a buffer in between, you know, the real police or the military and tourists because they want tourists to have a good time, obviously, because that's where a lot of income comes in. But basically, I got a shared cab and it was less than 800. I think I paid 500 rupees to go from the airport into the city. Now, Srinagar. As you're driving into Srinagar, there is um, armored vehicles and men standing around with machine guns quite often along Dahl Lake. They're almost posted, you know, every 50 yards or every 50 meters. And that made me nervous. I will say as I was driving, I didn't expect to see so many military members. And especially, you know, you're walking around, you're always wondering, are they going to ask me questions? Are they going to stop me? Am I going to have to produce some paperwork? I always carried my passport with me, um, which ha and ha had my visa with me. So if that happened, I was um, prepared. But there's, there's always that nervousness, someone's going to shake you down, you know, so uh, there's that. But no one ever did. No one ever talked to me. Um, no one even really paid much attention to me. And that was, that was good. No one paid much attention to anyone. Like I didn't see any negative encounters among the military and the, the people there. So it just seemed like they were there um, on guard. I was always weird about never being in front of the the gun though, you know, like, cause maybe they're kind of holding it up or, or holding it down. And anytime I always was walking around just in case, like, I don't want his, his finger to accidentally, you know, slip on the trigger and boom, there goes an American tourist got, got greased, you know? So, um, overall though, there's a big police presence, but they didn't say anything to me and I didn't see anything out of the ordinary that you wouldn't see in other places. Now, I stayed for a good period of time in Srinagar, the main city in Kashmir, and it's right on Dal Lake, and I was just a block from Dal Lake, so every day I'm walking along the the water and having some beautiful walks and dealing with the typical stuff you de deal with at a tourist destination. You know, you got the rickshaw guys trying to get you in their rickshaw, um, but overall, it was a beautiful place to stay and friendly people. Overall, the hospitality in Kashmir is really warm, welcoming. The people always want to know what you think of it. Do you find it beautiful? The people are always trying to make sure that you have a good time. My host was always trying to make sure I was set up. Like if I needed a heater for my room, he, he got me a heater. If I needed a lunch, you know, they would make my lunch for me. The hospitality was very warm. Many people come to Kashmir also to stay on a houseboat. Dahl Lake being the most popular destination. And while I didn't stay on Dahl Lake, I did take a shikara through Dahl Lake and I got to see the markets and I got to see the houseboats and see what life is like on that lake. Cause it's almost like a village or town in and of itself. There's a school, there's a post office, there are restaurants. So that's an interesting experience you'll want to have. I stayed on Nigene Lake, which is quieter. It's just like a serene lake, 30 minutes away. I'm glad I stayed on Nigene Lake because it was very peaceful. On the boat that I stayed, there was a nice family and the husband and wife had come to Kashmir on their honeymoon years ago and now they had this younger child with them. And she was telling me how much safer it is now than when she had come a few years ago because there was article 370 which placed some restrictions on cashmere i don't know a ton about it i'm not going to go into it but basically the general point is things have gotten a lot improved and and safer over the years and i also went for some road trips in the mountains and i went to a village called sonamarg which is surrounded by snow-capped peaks you can just imagine like what it would be like in the winter time it would be cold I had some delicious food while I was there. I got to see the mountains. It was a little muddy because it was the springtime when I went or just getting into summer. You can rent a horse and go up the mountains with family, which is what a lot of people do. I didn't have time to do that, but I got to see sitting, drinking a nice cup of chai, looking up at the mountains, watching the motorcycle guys get their motorcycles ready to go through their big trip. There are some tips you want to practice in Kashmir to make sure you have a safe trip. 
Basically, you want to avoid any large gatherings of people. While I was there was a G20 conference, which was a good thing. So a lot of different representatives would come and everyone in the city wanted their city to look great because they could get some more tourism um, from these other countries. But I was concerned and asking people, are there going to be any protests? I was thinking more like a G20 where the people protest outside of it, but it wasn't like that at all. But I made sure to avoid any large gatherings. And it's illegal for a foreigner to go to a protest in India. So if that were the case, like just don't go to that. I wouldn't get involved in the political situation at all. Even making this video, like I'm not going to give my perspective on the situation, like because it doesn't matter. I'm only going to give my experiences while I was there, which were positive. I had a great time. As I'm talking to people, I would really bring up the situation. I would, we would basically small talk of what you talk about with anybody as you were traveling around. Where can I get the good food? What's the good places to see? Can I get a little bit lower price? You'd also want to stick to popular tourist hotspots. Like you want to just go to some remote villages all on your own because you never know what the sentiment of people in certain places might be. But in the popular tourist hotspots, you're going to find plenty of beautiful things to watch or see around Srinagar, Sonamarg, Gulmarg, Pahulgam. These are places you can find any travel agency is going to be able to hook you up with a nice way to get there. There are shared taxis, there are private taxis that are a bit expensive, but safe and friendly people who will show you the best of the, the territory. You do want a Kashmiri SIM card. I bought a Delhi SIM card before I went and those don't work in Kashmir. So you got to get a separate SIM card. You can buy them in the same way you would buy a SIM card anywhere in India. Like a lot of little stores will have them. So just ask around until someone points you to someone who has them. I do have more tips in my article about how to stay safe in Kashmir answering this question. So check out my website, Chai Nomad. If you want to learn more about how I've planned safe trips around India for the past four years, I made a full long video about that on my channel. I'll link it down below first thing. I also wrote an ebook that's a little bit longer if you prefer to read those tips. Now, finally, why does the U.S. advise a level two caution when traveling to Kashmir? Now, it's because of these past conflicts and that at times there are violent disturbances that have happened. They're not typically with tourists. Like the local people there don't want to mess with tourists at all because they want tourist people to come and they're proud of where they live. And these government websites have a lower tolerance for risk than maybe someone like myself or, or maybe you. They're being conservative and saying that you do want to be cautious as you're traveling in this territory. But if you're interested in traveling Kashmir, I would recommend it. You can watch my video, my first impressions to get some more ideas. Check out my article about it and I wish you a good luck on that trip. I'm going to be making videos about my travels to every state in India. If you want to follow along, please do.